The difference is the beginning of the word. All right, so that much we already know, but what are the main differences between macronutrients and micronutrients? Which is one of the most important questions in all of nutrition, because figuring out your macros and your micros is absolutely key. It is fundamental. It is the base you need to work from to figure out how to manage your weight and your health and your body composition and your lean muscle tissue and your body fat, all of this. Between these two categories, you've got just about everything a human being needs to be ingesting. So I've roped in sports dietitian Natalie Rizzo to give us her summary. So macro means big and micro means small. So it's basically two different types of nutrients. Uh, macronutrients, there's only three of them, protein, carbs, fat. Micronutrients are all your other nutrients that are basically vitamins and minerals. So there's a ton of them, different vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, K, and then minerals are iron, calcium, sodium, magnesium, all of those different things. Basically, macros are nutrients that you measure in grams, and micros are nutrients that you measure in milligrams or micrograms, or like standardized units if we're talking about stuff like vitamin D. So if you ever use a diet calculator online, you'll plug in like your height, your weight, your activity level, that kind of stuff, and they'll tell you not just the amount of calories that you wanna be eating, but also a macronutrient split, the amount of protein, carbohydrates, and fat you should be consuming every day. And all three are absolutely critical to the functioning of your body and the way it looks. So protein you'll find in large amounts in meat, eggs, dairy, and legumes, and it helps to build and repair muscle. Carbohydrates, which you get in grains, fruits, starches, that's to support energy levels, and also to provide fiber, which is a type of carbohydrate, which improves digestive health and improves your nutrient absorption. Then there's fat, which you'll find in fatty meats, uh, coconut, oils, seeds, which is really important for providing extra calories, also to help with nutrient absorption and to maintain hormonal health. All of these macros have some other functions as well, but in broad strokes, these are the main functions you need to be mindful of. Sometimes people say water is. Sometimes people say water is a macronutrient because you also need that in grams, not micrograms. It's hard because there's no real set requirements for how much water you should have. So it's almost like, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> some people require, call it a macronutrient. I don't always, but you could consider it one. Water is obviously very important for your overall health. It helps to ensure that you're hydrated, that your muscles function properly, that you don't die. But then again, it is not really considered a nutrient or a macronutrient. It's usually more considered like an important chemical that you need to be consuming every day. And speaking of important chemicals you need to be consuming every day that we do measure in small amounts, let's talk about micronutrients or better known to you as vitamins and minerals. It's A, B, C, D, E, K. All of those. So again, macronutrients, we tend to think about measuring them in grams and the calories that they confer per gram. Protein and carbohydrates both have four calories per gram. Fat has nine calories per gram. Whereas micronutrients don't really have calories. I mean, they often accompany calories, of course, if you're eating them in whole foods. If you get some yogurt, that's gonna give you some calcium, but the calcium is not giving you the calories. It's like the protein and fat and carbs in the yogurt that's giving you the calories. And some micros are easier to get than others. Vitamin C, for example, you can get a whole day's worth in just one orange or one cup of broccoli. Then there are other nutrients like vitamin D that most people are deficient in because it's very hard to get in whole foods. And it's kind of one of those things that most people should probably take a vitamin D supplement. Because uh, vitamin D is actually really important for bone health, which is not something we tend to think of calcium, but vitamin D is one of those ones that um, is important for that as well. Vitamin D is a really big one. It's so important for our health. It's linked to bone health, hormonal health, longevity, a ton of other sorts of stuff, immunity as well. It's so important that we've evolved to get it from the sun just by walking around naked outside like we would normally be doing every day. We're able to get it that way. We don't even need to get food for it. And ironically enough, that's why so many of us are deficient in it because we tend to not spend much time naked outside anymore. So a lot of people tend to supplement with vitamin D. Another micronutrient that's kind of hard to get from whole foods alone is magnesium, very closely linked to improved sleep, improved workout recovery, lower levels of stress. A lot of athletes supplement with that, although you can find it in leafy greens and also legumes as well. And there's also omega-3 fatty acids, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on. But that's the long and short of it. That's macros versus micros. That's the most important stuff you need to know about this. But you should also know that there are some things that we ingest that are very important to our health that don't neatly fall into either of these categories. Number one is water, right? Obviously super important for our functioning, 
but doesn't really contain any calories or micronutrients. Number two is fiber, which is a type of carbohydrate, but especially with regard to insoluble fiber, it passes all the way through the body without really getting absorbed. So it's found in like stuff like grains and legumes, fruits as well, helps to add bulk to your stool. Good poops are better than bad poops, so it's definitely something that's worth consuming, but there's a lot of controversy as to whether or not the calories in fiber actually count, given it just kind of runs right through you. I've never really seen research on how many calories are absorbed in terms of that. Um, and I feel like that would actually be pretty difficult for people to figure out. But I don't know if people subtract the calories in fiber, but they subtract the carbs in fiber. I guess the bottom line is those calories still count, kind of. <laughs> Number three is alcohol. Alcohol contains seven calories per gram. So, you know, we mentioned grams, it gives us calories, but it's not really macronutrient. At least it's very debatable as to whether or not it is one. It's not protein, it's not fat, it's not really a carbohydrate either. Some people call it one, but it's not metabolized the same way. It doesn't give us energy the same way, help us recover the same way. If you have a macronutrient tracker on your phone, there's a decent chance it's gonna have its own category for alcohol in there, so you can track the calories from it. But whether or not you consider it a macronutrient, and most people don't, you should definitely keep in mind that it is not an essential nutrient. Number four is omega-3 fatty acids. This is a type of fat, so it's included under that umbrella macronutrient of fat, but I'm including it here because you don't typically see it on nutrition labels, even though it's very important for your overall health. Nutrition labels will have fat. Sometimes they'll say how much is saturated and unsaturated. Sometimes they'll say how much is polyunsaturated and monounsaturated but it's very rare to get omega-3 fatty acids on a nutrition label. I mean, technically, omega-3s are a fat, but th that's another one, that you're not seeing how many omega-3s you're getting, and there's a ton of research that omega-3s are really beneficial for heart health uh, and for cognition. So there are things that are definitely left out in terms of micronutrients and macronutrients. Number five, one last thing that often gets left off of the dichotomy of macronutrients and micronutrients is phytonutrients. These are like chemicals and compounds that are found in plants, and they're basically micronutrients that didn't make the cut. I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that, but phytonutrients include stuff like antioxidants, flavonoids, polyphenols, things that you can find in plants that contribute to our health in meaningful ways, but don't really count as vitamins and minerals. So for example, in broccoli, you're gonna get stuff like indole 3 carbonyl, which has links to anti-estrogenic properties, help to balance your hormones a little bit in that regard. You've also got isothiocyanates, a powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. There's glucosinolates, which have been linked to lower risks of heart disease, but none of these are technically vitamins and minerals. We don't really know how much of each is important to get every day. And they're not really essential for human functioning. They're just very good for human functioning. And there's a million different kinds of them. There is a, you know, uh, anthoniacins and flavonoids and all these different ones that are in all these fruits and vegetables. And they're very hard to measure. And even if you did say that, we don't know how many we really need in a day. There's no set standards there. Whereas micronutrients and macronutrients, there are set limits that they've like done research on and shown that you need that amount. So while macros and micros aren't everything when it comes to maintaining your health, I don't want to understate their importance. Macros, protein, carbs, and fat pretty much are everything when it comes to maintaining your body composition. And micronutrients are absolutely critical for like better hormonal health, better testosterone, better sleep, lower stress levels, a better immunity, I mean, everything, like everything. Micronutrients are hugely important they are essential nutrients. And while yes, phytonutrients are not essential nutrients, they're more like very helpful chemicals, they're nonetheless very important for your overall diet, as are many of the other things I've been talking about here in this video today. So what I'm trying to say here is, this is the bottom line, just because macronutrients and micronutrients are kind of considered the most important stuff in your nutrition profile, that doesn't mean that you should like just build your diet around butter and protein powder and sugar and a multivitamin. You do need to make sure you're getting plenty of whole foods. That way you're gonna get plenty of these polyphenols and antioxidants and all this other kind of stuff in your diet without trying too hard to get them. So whole foods, as always, they do reign king. I wanna thank Natalie Rizzo for coming on the channel today. That's everything from me. And uh, make sure you subscribe as well because we've got a whole lot more fitness and nutrition content coming up.